plants need light to grow. This we know. Plants use light to turn CO2 and H2O into sugar in a process called photosynthesis, and plants then use this sugar to grow, so many plants try and maximize the amount of light that they get. Some plants do this by growing bigger leaves, other plants do it by bending towards the sun as it moves across the sky through the day, and still others do it through a process called phototropism. Phototropism is when plants grow towards a light source. For demonstration purposes, let me introduce you to my basil plant. He's a little sad. Sometimes I forget to water him. If you notice, all the leaves are facing in one direction, and it's because this is the side of the plant on my windowsill that faces the window. The plant is so bent towards the sunlight that some of the leaves even press right up against the glass. So if we do an experiment, turn the plant around and leave it for a little while. Over the course of a few days, this perky little plant actually changed its direction of growth so that it was facing towards the sunlight again. This is an example of positive phototropism because the plant was growing towards the light. Plants use a hormone called auxin for this sort of directional growth. Plants use hormones for growth and maturation, much like animals. Didn't know plants had hormones? Well, you've obviously never tried to grow an orchid. I swear mine's not flowering out of pure spite. Auxin collects on the dark side of the plant and causes the cells on that side to elongate. This means that the cells on the dark side are growing faster than the cells on the light side, causing the stem to curve. Auxin can respond in similar ways to gravity and water, helping stems to grow up, roots to grow down, and some roots to grow towards water sources. Another really cool plant hormone is ethylene. Ethylene is involved in fruit maturation, and it's the reason why you can take unripe fruit, put it in a paper bag with a ripe apple, close it up, and get ripe fruit faster than if you had just left the two things sitting out on the counter. The ripe apple gives off ethylene gas, which gets trapped in the paper bag and stimulates ripening in the other fruit. It's thought that even the ancient Egyptians harnessed the power of ethylene. They would cut unripe figs, and the figs would produce ethylene as part of the wound response, and this ethylene would help them to mature faster. Go forth, do science. What if I could juggle? I cannot juggle.